Hello, my name is Rob Carner. I'm a computer programming instructor. And today I'm going to demonstrate how to start a C++ program. So the first thing is to get Visual Studio to run. You could, if you know where it is, you can click on it directly with your icon. But another way of doing that is in your search box here, type in visual. And <clears throat> with 2019, you'll have an installer where you can change the installation of your program. And then you'll have Visual Studio 2019. So I'm going to click on that and that will bring up uh, Visual Studio. And then we're going to select create a new project. And you'll have several options. We're going to be making a C++ program. So depending on how many things you've installed on Visual Studio, you might have um, a lot of choices here. To cut them down, you can use these filters. Since we're using C++, I'm going to put C++ there. Um, we are working on Windows. And um, for this machine, you might use a different machine. Um, usually, uh, Visual Studio works easiest on Windows. And then you'll pick uh, the type of um, application, which this will be a console application. So once we have C++ Windows console, that'll bring us a couple choices, empty project and console app. Um, the one we're going to use is console app. And once you click that, you can click next. We're just going to call this one Hello World. You can place the location for the drive by clicking these ellipses here to uh, pick any location you want. Generally speaking, the default one works well on your computer at home. At school, you may talk to your instructor and see where the best place to, to place it is. And then click Create. So this is what's called an IDE, uh, Integrated Development uh, Environment. And this is really a collection of tools that is made to make uh, your job as a programmer easier. You could actually write a C++ program using just a regular notepad editor. But there's a lot of features of an integrated development environment that makes this easier. And of course, this can be kind of bewildering at first. There's a lot of different options and controls. We're going to show you the things you need to know um, initially. And over time, you'll find the pieces of this tool that are useful to you. You know, a typical programmer doesn't use maybe more than 20% of it. Um, there are features in here that are for specific purposes for specific types of development. Notice that we have you know, typical menu controls at the top here. You can also create a new project if you open up Visual Studio. Rather than using the opening window, you can go here and create a new project, and it'll open up that initial creation window, just like we did initially. The menu, the, the typical layout that you get when you first load up a Visual Studio will include a toolbox, a main working area where our code is, a solution explorer, which is very much like a file explorer. Um, in fact, this program here, Hello World CPP, is located under this source files folder right there. And then usually down at the bottom, a series of, of windows, including the output window and the error list, which are both windows that we use quite a bit here in programming. So if you were, for example, to lose your program here, you could double click on the program and it'll bring it up over here. Over time, we will have multiple files. Initially, you typically use one source file. In this case, it's called hello world.cpp, which happens to be the same name as our project folder here and our solution folder at the top. 
Other windows that you might lose and you might need to recover are include the Solution Explorer. We often need to know where our files are located. If I were to accidentally close my Solution Explorer, I could go up here to the View menu, and all of the windows that you see here are all located in this list of windows. In fact, there's so many here that there's an other Windows folder which lists other things. So if you're missing a window that you need, go look at View and you'll find, in this case, we're looking for the Solution Explorer, which is this top one. Notice that when I click on this, my Solution Explorer comes back. Similarly, if I was missing my Output window, I could go up, View, find the Output window and it'll come back. These windows are also dockable. That means that we can we can move um, elements around. So if I took my Solution Explorer, you'll see there's this docking widget. I could dock it to the other side. It looks like... And right now Visual Studio is going through something where it has some problems with that. So in this case, I lost my Visual Studio. It happens sometimes. If you right click, you can find the uh, program that you're missing and open it back up. And I'll open up my, my Hello World. So you can, probably they'll fix that in a later iteration, but once they do, you can actually move your windows around to where they work best for you. Now, when we start off Hello World, there's um, they're going to give you a bunch of um, useful notes here. Notice that these double slashes here are comments. Comments allow us as programmers to put remarks in our code. They don't actually get executed. They're just there to help us out and in this iteration of uh, Visual Studio, they give you a bunch of tips for how to get started. You can read through those. We're going to go through those ourselves. But um, And so I'm just going to delete these comments at the bottom. And then typically we will put in um, comments here that tell us um, who the programmer is. Uh, the date, and then purpose of this program. And your instructor may have different ways that, uh, to, that they want you to make your comment header. Another way that a comment header can also be made is by using asterisk and slash at the beginning so that we don't have um, these slashes everywhere. A double slash is a single line comment and an asterisk and slash at each end is a block comment. Some other changes that we typically make when we're starting a program in C++ are you'll notice that there's this standard colon colon thing here. And if we were to continue writing code, we would have to place this in front of every single command that was related to the standard library. This becomes kind of cumbersome. And so to avoid that, we typically do this. And that gets rid of this comment. You'll see those in documentation online. But as long as you put namespace standard at the top, we can make all of our commands just be the commands themselves, for example, C out. And then with our main function, we often add a statement to return zero. This just tells the operating system that our program executed correctly and um, is often a good idea in case someone's running your program in a batch file. 
So this is the typical start of a C++ program. We have one statement in here. This is the C out statement. And basically what it says is take this string here, hello world. We know it's a string because it has these double quotes around it. And this basically says stream. This is the stream operator. Hello world to the standard output device, which typically is our screen or our console. So I'm going to run this. Now to run your program, there's a couple ways of doing it. If you go up to debug up here, we have start debugging and start without debugging. For now, for this demonstration, I'm going to use start without debugging. Debugging is a different um, demonstration. But if I click start without debugging, a console will open up. I'm going to change the size of this font so we can see it. And we can see that our command hello world works. And now we have a working program. Now, if you run your program, it will automatically save. You can say, make sure your program is saved by clicking on save hello world here, or you can save all, or you also have um, your save commands here. It's a good idea to make sure that your program is saved before you quit. Um, I usually like to go find my program. You can find your program on the drive by right clicking on the uh, Solution Explorer, open the folder in File Explorer. And you will find that when you do that, it will open up a directory where your program is. And this is where your program is located. So once you have that, you can, you can close this program and if you wanted to open this program again, holoworld.sln will actually open that folder or that program again. So if I double click on holoworld.sln, my program opens up again and I can continue working. I'm going to close this again. And one of the tasks that sometimes happens is that you need to zip your folder up with your project and um, send it to somebody. So let's look at the structure of this folder. You'll notice that we have hello world here. This is the top level folder. There's also a hello world folder inside of here. Sometimes people come in here and they only turn in this part. You actually need, notice that we have two hello world folders. You actually need to have the entire solution, which means that it's this hello world um, here, which is the entire project. So to, to make this more compact, there's a few files we can delete here. This x64 file, sometimes it'll, it'll say things like debug or um, it will, in this case, it has a debug folder in it. We can get rid of that debug folder. So I can delete that one. and I can delete this one. So there's a debug folder, and the way you know it's a debug folder is you can go in here and you'll see that it says debug. Those files get recreated each time we compile the program, and so we can delete those files. The other file is this .vs folder. Now you may not see that folder initially. Most people, if they haven't done much with their computer, um, to with the um, in File Explorer, you'll typically have these checkboxes in the view menu of your File Explorer off. And you'll notice we can't see um, that invisible file. If we select hidden files, we see that .vs folder. That .vs folder actually has takes up quite a bit of memory. And it's another file that gets recreated each time. So we can actually delete that one too. I typically have file extension names and hidden files enabled on my Explore window. Um, most programmers will have both of those enabled because you, you really want to see what's in the folder. Once we delete the two debug folders and the .vs folder, we can go up to repos, 
or the top the make we can go to the top level solution folder here. Make sure you're at the top level one. It's not unusual. Students will just zip that um, that folder here. We don't want to do that. We want to be up at the very top level. Take this top level folder, and if you you can click on you can right click, go to send to, and compress zip folder. And that will make a nice compact zip folder that you can upload to your projects um, in your instructor's learning management system. So that concludes uh, how to make a basic color world program in C++. Thank you very much.